All right, so in the last video, I explained how I came up with this sketch, and then uh, I saved it as a PNG out of Photoshop. I can just close Photoshop, and then when I open it with Illustrator, this is what it looks like, because it's a raster file made of pixels, right? It's going to want me to live trace it right away. And you'll see if I click on it, it puts a blue box around it, it says image trace at the top. I don't actually want to do that because this is what will happen if I do that. I could say, you know, black and white logo, like we did for our logo designs. And it will give me line work, right? And I can trace it, but look how much it leaves out. And if spot illustrations are about detail, there's also going to be a lot of kind of schmutz. So if I use the tracing options, and I, you can do it this way if you want, um, you just have less control. And I make it more forgiving, right, of my lines. It might give me some interesting things, but I don't get to really control them, right? It starts to look pretty sketchy. So if I want full control, I won't live trace. Instead, I will go back to not live tracing. Command Z, Command Z, Command Z, Command Z. Remember, these are all just live trace um, suggestions, right? Until I hit expand. So here, I am now going to uh, click on that layer and dim the image to 50%. That's called onion skinning. And then I'm going to lock it. So I can't accidentally work on that layer. And now the new layer on top of that, which will be a red anchor layer. This is where I'll start to actually do my digital inking. So let's set up the tools. First of all, I want to just do my inking with black with solid black and I do not want a stroke turned on and the tool I want to use is the blob brush so that it makes a path that I can add to with each stroke right like this and if I wanted to just wipe them all out in one stroke I can and it's not making a bunch of individual paths see just one path now I need to customize that tool to be pressure sensitive and to be as faithful or as smooth as I want. In this case, I think I want it to be either here or here. I'm not going for a really clean logo. I want it to be kind of expressive and strange. But there might be some places I want it to be cleaner. And then I need to get the right thickness. So I'm going to go for a smaller size with full variation, maybe six points. And then you can always zoom in and use spacebar to pan around. The harder I press, the more it will fill in. So it's just like inking with a brush or anything else. And because this is a logo that I want to be versatile, not a logo, I'm sorry, this is a spot illustration I want to be versatile, not a logo that needs to be clean and scalable. I don't need to worry about all the little things. I'm just worrying about creating something I like. And I'm okay with it having some variation and remember you can hit command Z if you don't like the line you just made but you also don't want to try to control everything too much you want to practice detached engagement because even though this is a fun project it's not the end all and be all of everything we'll ever do One of the hardest things to do with a digital stylus is just have a light touch. Right. 
Now to make coloring easier later, it's another reason I'm using the blob brush. I wanna make sure everything connects fully. So I don't wanna leave any open gaps. That's just gonna help my coloring later. And the blob brush will, will connect those lines all together. Now, professional illustrators that do spot illustrations like this all the time, do it for print, do it for uh, stickers, for clothing graphics, <coughs> for fashion, for skateboards, whatever. They have to work um, on so many deadlines and usually have to create so many different ideas all the time that they get pretty good at that detached engagement where they try to have fun more than they try to do always their best work in a really controlled way. It's not that it's not their best work. It's just that they don't constantly uh, put that pressure on themselves, right? It's most important to just work at it and try to be um, mindful and reactive. So this piece, I try to give myself some guiding principles, right? Because all these little decisions you're gonna make really matter. This piece, I'm thinking of the rabbit as being pretty open in its line work. So even though I'm doing a lot of lines, there's a lot of space between them, except at the outline, which I want contained. And I'm trying to keep it pretty loose. In fact, I might even go a little bit thinner. My point size, maybe to a five, maybe a four. But unlike uh, traditional inking, I can go in and I can use an eraser and clean it up at any time. And kind of cut out a mark or thin a mark that I think uh, isn't as helpful. And because it's the blob brush, this is not a stroke. This is not a regular brush tool. The inside and the outside of each mark matters. So I can erase away from just the outside. And now I just want to have some energy, just like I was inking it on a tracing pad in my lap. This is where you want line confidence, what I call an animator's line instead of a sketching line. I'm not trying to search for the right mark. I'm just kind of confidently putting it down. And I can tweak it later. Some illustrators do very tight pencils and then make their line work just follow that meticulously. Uh, some illustrators do almost nothing in their pencils, it's just gestural. And then they really tighten up on their, their inking. So you just find what works for you. Notice I'm not even looking at reference. I'm not looking at the photos or the, the inspirations I have yet. I'm just trying to build up my line vocabulary. Now, because I'm doing it this way, it's going to be pretty fluid and there's gonna be a lot of variation in the lines. If I wanted it to be really mechanical, I might use the pen tool, or I might uh, set my brush to be a lot more smooth, or I might set it not to have any variation in its width at all. So it's just depending on what kind of look you want. And I can hold down Command and get that small selection tool. And for any kind of self-contained path, I can delete it that way. I'm going to take it down even a little bit more. 
Now, if you're not having enough versatility, you feel, with your brush, this isn't a trick because the brush size is not based on pixels, it's based on points. What I can do is unlock both layers, select them both, use the large selection tool, hold down shift and option, and then just grow the whole thing a lot bigger, way beyond the artboard. And then lock the background again. And now my brush will be a whole lot smaller so I can do a lot more detail. Because once I get get within four points, that's that's pretty tiny. That's still too big. So a lot of it's just setting it up to have your what feels most comfortable. And I'm zoomed in quite a bit here because these are the finishing inks. I want to make sure I have a full outline. But you might also decide you want to work on the whole thing all at once. And you just want to cover a lot of ground quickly. And then you can zoom in and work on details. Even in finished inking, it's, it's good not to be too uh, focused on details too early. Why did I start with the eye? Well, that's the thing I was most kind of focused on. And I just wanted to kind of set the tone for that early. I know that's going to be the dark spot in an otherwise kind of white rabbit represent dreaming or thinking of absurdity and association with these two. And just try not to be too suspicious of your own hand. It's not about trying to make it look like anyone's work other than your own. You're trying to make your make the most of what you can do. And I'm I'm fairly suspicious of the idea of a personal style. So don't try too hard to fit a certain style that you think matches you or who you are. Instead just work with what you've got. You can try playing with the shape of your blob brush as well. You can give it a slight angle. Make it a little bit more calligraphic if you like. And remember you have that, that eraser as well. And the eraser, you can play with all those same functions except uh, not pressure except you can't uh, play with how smooth or accurate the eraser is. The eraser is always going to be fully accurate. <laughs> if that makes sense. And when you set the pressure sensitivity of your tools, you have to also put in the variation of it. For purposes of coloring, I want to close up.